So today I just am doing an upgrade on this budget PC that I built. Basically in here at the minute is the 1600 Ryzen 5 AMD processor and it's just a bit dated now. Definitely due an upgrade. I'm noticing when editing, I'm getting a lot of lag when scrubbing across and rendering times are getting longer. And also for that little bit of gameplay that I do, the you know, cheeky bit of Call of Duty or something like that. I wanna see if it ups those FPS, see if I can get better frames per second. At the minute it's doing about, I think between 30 and 40 frames per second, depending on what's going on. But that's been my 4K display. So it is being pushed that little bit more. I think if you had a 1080p display, you'd probably get higher FPS, but as it's 4K display, it's being pushed a bit more. That probably is more to do with the graphics card. I got a 1050 Ti in here. So when it comes to the game inside of things, I think it's the graphics card that's probably bottlenecking the FPS. So it'll be interesting to see if I do get slightly better FPS with the new Ryzen 7. Mostly it's for productivity, such as, you know, at the Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro. I just want them all to run a bit smoother. So hopefully this upgrade is worth the extra 200 and 65 pounds I think I paid. So how we're gonna know is I recorded the Ryzen 1600 rendering out a video in Premiere Pro. So we can see how long that took before to after. I'll leave it all at the same settings, the same video. So we can compare the two, see if rendering times hopefully should go up. And I also recorded some Call of Duty gameplay so we can see if the frames per second go up. So if you guys at home have got a Ryzen 5 1600 in your PC at the minute and you're looking to upgrade, let's find out if it's worth it. Oh, my screwdriver set. Pull it out, that old processor out. Woo. So yep, there's a new Ryzen chip and a new cooler. Whoa. No. Oh. But yeah, always be careful when sticking screwdrivers into the computer, obviously. Yes! Okay, what? That one looks smaller. Why, 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 why? Obviously, you've got to be so careful with all the little pins sticking out that you don't bend one. Pull down. Boom. So that's that locked in place. Now I'm going to put the cooler in. Oh, man. Yeah. Hey, that is on there. Solid. Woo. Now let's connect these cables. You can either connect to your existing RGB lights in your case, or you can connect to the motherboard to control separately. Come on. That's that. So yeah, there it is with the new cooler. Hopefully it all powers up okay. Take it back over to my desk, plug it in, check it out, see if it fires up. Okay guys, so I've got the computer all plugged in and it fired up okay, so that's all good. So we should be ready to do the same tests that I did on the 1600. I have everything obviously at the same settings and in Premiere Pro it'll be the exact same project to render out. Uh, so let's jump into Premiere Pro now. So I'll put these both side by side so we can see how much faster the 3700X renders out the project. Obviously these are some very basic tests, but these are things I wanted to know when thinking of upgrading. We should see about a 20 to 25% increase in performance because the 3700X has eight cores, which is two more than the 1600 and it also has a clock speed of 4.4 gigahertz. Okay, and the 1600 has finished about 33 seconds after the 3700X. So that's not actually that much of a difference. Obviously it is a performance increase. And if you had a bigger project, even a longer project, it's gonna increase that speed time even more. For this one, we've seen about a 10% increase in speed, which I think now my GPU is bottlenecking the system. Obviously because now we've got a better performance CPU. The GPU is now a, a lower end graphics card. So when it comes to choosing a processor for video editing, it actually comes down to the balance the balance balance between your gpu and cpu because performance tends to be limited by the lowest denominator of them too especially when gpu acceleration is enabled in premiere pro i've also brought some new ram uh, i've got 16 gig in here at the minute this is 32 gig and the ones in here are 2400 whereas these are 3000 megahertz so hopefully I should see a bit of a better performance when I've got multiple applications open like Premiere Pro. I got these for a pretty good price. I think it's about 113 pounds, 114 pounds. Uh, I'll post the link in the description below. 
Again, these are from Amazon. And as well as these, I think it's only gonna be a matter of time before I update the GPU in this system. Uh, probably gonna go for a RTX 2060. Um, I think that will restore the balance. Balance. Okay, so now let's go over and play a bit of Call of Duty and see if we get some better FPS in the game. I'm hoping so because on my old one, I was only getting about 30 to 40 frames a second. Although bear in mind, this is a 4K display. So if you had that previous setup with a 1080p display, you'll definitely be getting a lot higher frame rates than me. Obviously, as we know, the graphics card is the most important in a game and setup, but also choosing the right CPU is just as important and can make some difference in games. The 3700X does have some really strong single cores. So this should help performance in gaming. Bruh. So I'm getting about 10 to 15 frames per second more than with the 1600. Of course, that's with everything on the same settings. And again, it's on my 4K display. I'd say this is quite a nice improvement, uh, but it's definitely clear that the 1050 Ti is bottlenecking the system again. So definitely do that GPU upgrade to that 2060. I think that's definitely coming soon. Balance. So I would say guys, if you've got the Ryzen 5 1600 and you're looking to upgrade your PC, you've got a bit of money there, I'd say put that towards a GPU if you don't already have a decent graphics card because I think the 1600 is more than capable. But that being said, the 3700X is a brilliant piece of kit. Um, I mean, the, the wattage is low, you're getting 65 watts. So other CPUs at this performance would definitely take quite a bit more power. Uh, let me just come out of this game. Bish, bish. Plus it's an absolute beast when it comes to multi-threaded workloads. If you're doing some video editing, you're definitely gonna see and feel some actual performance boosts. You're also getting good value for money. I mean, I've got this for, what does I say, 265 pounds. Plus that includes the RGB Raspire cooler, which isn't the best cooler, but it definitely keeps the CPU cool and that's under quite intensive workloads. If you wanna overclock quite high, then you're definitely gonna to have to upgrade the cooler because I don't think that'll be able to keep up. But again, you can pick a decent cooler up for about 20 pounds. So that's not too much of an issue. So yeah, overall, I think for me, it's definitely worth the upgrade because I do mostly video editing, do a bit of After Effects and all that because it can utilize the extra cores and the extra gigahertz that you get with the CPU. I'll post all the links in the description below. If there's any questions you have, just fire them in, in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Peace.